hello. Thank you for joining Teledyne LaCroix today for our webinar, Using an Optical Modulation Analyzer to Optimize 16 QAM Optical Transceivers. My name is Hilary Lustig, and I'm the Marketing Communications Manager for Teledyne LaCroix. For some of you, this may be your first event with us. And I'd like to take a minute and introduce our company to you. In August of 2012, LaCroix became Teledyne LaCroix when we were acquired by Teledyne Technologies. Founded in 1964, we are a U.S.-based company, headquartered in Chestnut Ridge, New York, where many of our oscilloscopes are designed and manufactured. Our current real-time oscilloscope, attended DesignCon or OFC in the past year, you've seen our 100 gigahertz real-time oscilloscope prototype. Our presenters today are Dr. Sung Hoon M from Coherent Solutions and Dr. Alan Blankman from Teledyne LaCroix. You can speak live with both of our presenters at ECOC and CON this month at booth 212. Before we begin the presentation, just a few housekeeping items. We will be answering all questions at the end of Alan, I will now turn the presentation over to you. Thank you, Hillary. I'm pleased to be here today with Sung Hoon so that we can present to you how to uh, use the, our optical modulation analyzer. Um, some of you might be wondering about our uh, partnership. So Coherent Solutions and Teledyne LaCroix have been in partnership to develop an optical modulation analyzer using LaCroix's oscilloscopes and Coherent Solutions coherent optical receivers, as well as their expertise for writing software to do the optical modulation analysis. So in this webinar, we will show a live demo of the acquisition analysis of a 28 gigabaud DPQPS, DP16 QAM modulated optical signal. Uh, the agenda will review the system setup. We'll do a live demo of looking at the PAM4 electrical signals that are going to be the source signals for our 16 QAM uh, optical signal. And then we'll review the coherent optical transmitter receiver design, review of the D of DSP. Modulated signal. So first I'll discuss the system setup. I'm going to go through and discuss each of the components that we have in the system. Sung Hoon certainly is our expert here on the optical components. I'll touch on them briefly so that we're not constantly switching back and forth be between presenters, but uh, Sung Hoon is, is the one to, um, to, uh, to discuss the optical components. So here's a screenshot uh, that's actually a real picture. This is where we are right now uh, in our Santa Clara office at LaCroix, where we have our uh, oscilloscope, the uh, Anritsu generator for the PAM4 signal, and the, um, the optical transmitter and receiver. And so uh, I'll go through and I'm going to discuss each of these components. Uh, in, uh, in a little bit of detail, but not too in-depth. So first is the PAM4 signal generator. That's uh, uh, going to uh, generate our PAM4 signals. And as I mentioned, we're going to use a 28 um, gigabit per second uh, tributaries in generating uh, two PAM4 signals. Those signals are sent to the, um, to the uh, DP 16 QAM generator. This is an, uh, a, an, the IQ transmitter from Coherent Solutions. Uh, this, and that's now generating an optical signal that's going to uh, go to the coherent receiver, um, uh, which will then output four electrical signals to uh, the LaCroix oscilloscope. And then the oscilloscope includes um, the coherent solutions analysis tools for doing the optical modulation analysis. And so here we have the, uh, the, the model numbers of each of the pieces of equipment that's being used uh, in our system. And we'll go through each of these one by one and uh, give you a little more information. So first is the Anritsu MP1800A series signal quality analyzer. And I'd like to thank um, um, Anritsu for lending us the equipment and for giving us assistance in um, setting this up and, and optimizing 
the, um, the system to generate PAM4. So we have an MP1800A mainframe. Inside of it are two PPGs, the MU183020A dual channel PPGs. So we are using each of these uh, four PPGs, single-ended, sending their outputs to the MZ1834A four PAM converter box. And this converter box is going to take in these four signals and combine them and uh, output the PAM4 electrical signals that we're going to send to the IQ transmitter. So here's what this 4PAM converter box looks like. If you open it up, it's very simple. It's a, it's a, it's a box that um, includes some attenuators to, avoid, to uh, keep, keep reflections from coming back, and then has power uh, divider combiners to add up signals. So we have um, these four signals. We're labeling them uh, A high and B high. High meaning, uh, for instance, one volt or two volts. Uh, and A low and B low, which are nominally half the size of the A high and the B high signals. And so we sum up A high and A low, and that now will output um, a PAM4 signal. Similarly and independently, we have for the, the B high and B low signals, we combine them and we get our PAM4B signal, which is our uh, Q or a quadrature um, signal. So we have now four inputs to this box and uh, looking to take now two outputs and send them over to the, uh, to the transmitter. So for those who are unfamiliar with how this might work and how you end up getting PAM4, uh, for example, if we set the A high, A high and B high for two volt and we set the low signals to one volt, summing them up will then give a PAM4 signal with levels uh, of 0, 1, 2, or 3 volts. So for example, if you have a bit stream, uh, in this case, a bit stream 1101, et cetera, and here I'm pairing them up uh, to help illustrate this concept. If we take this bit stream and each pair of bits we now uh, put into uh, the A high and um, A low, for instance, uh, uh, legs, then when we add them up in our PAM4 converter, we would get a signal that looks uh, looks like this. So the first symbol, you see this blue rectangle which represents two volts since we have a one as the most significant bit. And then the orange rectangle is an extra volt for the one that's in the least significant bit. So that symbol now is going to be a three volt sub, uh, signal. The second symbol, since we have a zero one, those are adding up to only be one volt. And so on, we can get um, a two volt level, we can get zero volt level, then up to three volt again, for example. And so if you uh, drew a line connecting these, you would see basically a digital signal of a PAM4 waveform. Of course, no waveforms look that beautiful once uh, you, um, you put them in, uh, you transmit a 28 gigabaud. But in this case, what we have is a PAM4 stream um, that can be represented with those, uh, these values, three, one, two, zero, and so on. So this is one PAM4 stream, and we're going to create a second independent PAM4 stream that uh, uh, together will transmit to our, the next step in the system, which is the 16 QAM optical signal generation. So here we're using the coherent solutions uh, model IQ transmitter. And so this device is receiving those PAM4 signals in and um, uh, forming the optical signal out. So it includes a built-in laser to, for, to be the local oscillator, and uh, we use um, a PMF to um, take that internal laser and bring it in, uh, bring it around so it can be our, our LO source. Uh, it has both single and dual pole um, capability, so we connect the single pole out to the dual pole in, and then we take the dual pole out on a, uh, a single mode fiber. Now that's carrying our DP16 QAM signal to our coherent optical receiver. So this device it also includes um, control for both the laser frequency, or you can control it with a uh, wavelength, as well as the laser power. And you also have control of, with these dials with, of the modulator bias points, I and Q, as well as quadrature. So the next step in, in the system, after we uh, generate our CP16 QAM signal 
is to send that into the coherent receiver. So uh, coherent solutions uh, sells their IQ scope RT series of receivers. We bring in our 16 qualm signal into the receiver, uh, and also now this also includes also includes a um, a laser, a built-in laser, so that we can do the coherent detection. Uh, coming out of this receiver now are going to be four electrical outputs, I and Q for both X and Y polarization. Um, now, since the state of polarization um, has changed as it moves down the fiber, since you have chromatic dispersion potentially, uh, um, you have I and Q outputs here that are, are mixed up in some way or that, that can, need, can use some uh, digital signal processing to be able to restore the, and, and, uh, the original I and Q signals. So that's, that's the, next, the next step, is to take these I and Q electrical outputs and send them over to the oscilloscope. So we're using today the Teledyne LaCroix LabMaster 10ZI uh, real-time digital oscilloscope uh, on the product manager for this particular scope. Uh, we're using a model that has 36 gigahertz analog bandwidth, 160 giga sample per second sample rate. Uh, and this scope is designed to have very tight matching from channel to channel, very small channel to channel jitter. It's also a modular system, so we can take the, uh, many of these acquisition modules, like you see at the bottom, to form up to, for instance, an 80-channel system. Uh, so at the bottom are the is the acquisition model, module, which is receiving in the four um, signals that are output from our coherent optical receiver. Uh, up top is our control uh, box, which runs the software. It's also a clock distribution unit that is now also running the software to do the optical modulation analysis. Now, you can see that this box in the middle, the coherent optical receiver, um, has similar uh, design as in terms of coloring and such. That's because we created this particular solution, this OMA, in partnership with Coherent Solutions so that it can be uh, a, a single instrument rather than a system of many independent ones. So the next step, once you've acquired your signals, uh, you need to now analyze them. So the screenshot at the top is showing the, the I and Q signals that are coming from the coherent receiver. And so uh, they, um, these, are, these signals now need to have DSP applied, um, need to then, after doing DSP, to look to analyze and form measurements such as EVM, uh, IQ bias, et cetera. And also we look to uh, do the optical modulation analysis and show you constellations, show you trajectories, and we'll get to that later on in the presentation. Sung Hoon's going to discuss how we can um, tune up the system and how we're going to take those four messy looking waveforms and look to um, form uh, I and Q signals that, um, that you can do data on, use for, for data analysis. At the bottom is showing the flow chart of, that we have in our OMA dialog, where we come in with their signals and go through signal processing chains and then look to do graphs and measurements. So the summary of this whole configuration, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but uh, we set the system up to have a 28, uh, use 20 gigabit per second um, data streams. And as discussed previously, we have um, certain voltages that we're going to use for the MSB and LSB. Um, in a nominal PAM4 signal, you might, if it's electrical, you'd have a ratio of 2 to 1, but we'll explain why we're not using a 2 to 1 ratio here, 0.9 and 0.5. And then we need to adjust delays. And so what we're going to go do is to show you how we look to optimize the, the PAM4 signal. So, the steps to optimize the signal, we're, we're going to acquire the signals on the scope, and I'm going to switch over to our oscilloscope display in a moment. We're going to view those PAM4 signals and make some eye diagrams, and then we'll configure um, some delays for each tributary. Um, and some considerations why we're doing this, uh, you want to aim to maximize your signal integrity. So in the process of putting this system together, we learned a lot along the way about, about cable matching and about um, losses and how they're going to affect um, both the PAM4 signal as well as the optical signal. So of course when you're validating a system, you, you move down the chain. So first what we're going to do is uh, instead of, we're going to take the PAM4 signals, instead of taking the PAM4 signals and sending them to the transmitter, what we've done is we've connected them to the oscilloscope. And so let's go and, um, and 
uh, look at our oscilloscope and, and look at those signals. So here's our oscilloscope display. It's running live. Um, right now it's in stop mode. I'm going to hit the auto button on the scope. And now you can see it in action. I'm using real VNC to actually um, take this window and, and be able to um, help present it. So we've acquired, acquired the signal here on two channels, channel one and channel two. And uh, we have um, configured our system to, um, to uh, in, in, in a standard way, we have a, um, we're at 50 millivolts for division currently. Uh, we're using sine x over x interpolation to help get some additional sample points in, so which is helpful for the analysis. And so we can increase the time base, and as we go to a longer time base, you can definitely see there's something there that definitely looks like four levels, right? So let's take and look at this signal, um, and uh, look at the the I diagram that we would see for these two channels. So let's go out to a time base that um, is good for that kind of analysis acquire waveform. So now I've come out to a 400 kilosample um, length acquisition. And I'm going to go now into our serial data analysis software to, that I'll do, to do some eye diagramming. So this particular piece of software is designed primarily for uh, uh, analyzing eye jitter and noise on uh, NRZ signals. But we found that for PAM4, we um, can now also look to form eye diagrams. And We've got some things in the works for analyzing jitter and such on PAM4 signals as well. So today we have, um, we're using SDA3 complete link. That's what this feature is called. Uh, lane 1 is set up to use channel 1. Lane 2 is set up to use channel 2. And um, we can look to um, configure to show an eye diagram. And so let's enable SDA and, and see what we have here. So it's processing those waveforms. And there we have them. So let's turn off channel 1 and channel 2. We're not really needing to look at these anymore because we're just looking at now the eye diagrams. So let's go into single grid mode. So what you're seeing here on the left side is uh, what we call a lanescape. So this is the lanescape for lane 1. Lane 1, recall, is showing channel 1 analysis. Lane 2 is showing the analysis of, um, of, of channel 2. And so here we have um, an eye diagram. And, and we can see that it looks a little uh, skewed. We see that our PAM4i isn't yet tuned up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and um, adjust those um, those delays that we can adjust in the um, in the uh, MP1800A uh, to to optimize that. So what we can do, we can just focus on lane one. So I can switch to single grid mode, make this a little bigger, and I'm going to put ourselves in auto trigger mode. And um, it will repeatedly update um, the waveform for about every five seconds. And so uh, Sung Hoon's over here on the MP1800A. And he's going to um, change the delay between these, the MSB and LSB streams from, uh, from 0 milli UI to 60 milli UI. And um, once we make that change, we can see that, the, um, that there's going to be a shift in the UI. So that moved it a little. So Sung Hoon, if you could move it now to um, 120 milli UI. And so we can now uh, slowly sort of tune this up. What we're looking to do is looking to make this whole crossing area much more symmetric. So that moved it closer. We're still not tuned up completely. So the last step here, let's go to 180 milli UI. And um, on the next sweep, we we'll should see it in, uh, lined up nicely. Here we go. So here it's well tuned up. We can see that in the crossing area, you can see that that these um, crossings are very much aligned vertically at the same time. And so here now we have um, our lane 1 I looking good. So let's now switch to lane 2. But what we're going to do for lane 2 first is we're going to store this to a reference lane. One feature of SDA3 uh, complete link is there is a um, what's called a reference lane that allow you to um, do a before after comparison. So let's go to dual mode, and we'll compare lane 2 to the reference. So now we see they look the same, because we just stored lane 2 to ref. So now let's go and uh, modif modify the delay. So um, Sung Hoon's making that change. And now we see that lane 2 has shifted. 
And uh, we're not optimized yet, so let's put in another value. We're increasing it now to 150, and um, now we're now we're lined up. So here we can use our our zero data analysis tools to um, to tune up this the the PAM4 signals, get the eyes looking clean, get them lined up, uh, and also if you're wanting to compare scenarios such as with different voltage levels or different delays, we have these features of being able to compare lane to lane. So now that we have um, have the PAM4 signals tuned up. Let's switch back over and um, and and now um, uh, move on to the next next step of the of of the presentation. Here's the uh, user interface for the MP1800A, where you can adjust the, the delay and also adjust amplitudes. So this is what we uh, Sung Hoon was adjusting while we were uh, tuning up the PAM4 signals. So now I'm going to pass the presentation over to, um, to Sung Hoon. Thank you, Alan. Uh, this is Sung Hoon M. So we've um, optimized the PAM4 signal in the RF domain, so it's time to have a look at how we can generate optical signals using these uh, <coughs> drive signals. So today um, I have with me the IQ transmitter from Coherent Solutions to generate optical signal uh, using the PAM4. And it, it will be analyzed using IQ Scope RT, OMA system, optical modulation analyzer, uh, also from Coherent Solutions and Teledyne LeCroy. Um, and uh, we'll be demonstrating how uh, OMA is used to um, analyze and characterize signals to aid the optimization. So firstly, let's have a look at the IQ transmitter. So IQ transmitter block diagram is shown here. It consists of an IQ modulator. It's a single polarization modulator. So you have single pole input here <coughs> and single pole output. Um, it has three bias controls for I, Q, and the phase offset, optical phase offset between the two. And it also has a built-in laser which is tunable with a narrow line width. It has two input RF channels because it's only a single pole IQ modulator. <coughs> now it generates dual polarization by emulating uh, optically uh, from a single polarization signal. So the block you see here is the uh, dual polarization emulator where you put in single pole signal, it gets split optically into two, and it's recombined with a 90 degree polarization shift in one of the arms. And the one of the arms also has an optical delay so that uh, once it recombines the two signal uh, on each polarization is decorrelated. So now let's have a look at the connections uh, of the IQ transmitter. So we have the uh, four-channel PPG generating uh, binary signals which go into the PAM4 generator. So it generates two-channel PAM4s which connect to the I and Q inputs of the IQ transmitter. That gets amplified to the voltage levels that's appropriate for the IQ modulator and um, <coughs> that, that's what's driving the uh, IQ transmitter. In the optical side, we use the built-in laser source as the LO output, <coughs> and that gets co connected to the single polarization modulator input. And the output from the modulator, now that's the modulator 16 qualm signal, gets uh, put into the dual polarization emulator stage where it generates uh, a pseudo dual polarization 16 quam signal. Now that gets connected to the OMA for characterization and analysis and uh, OMA is also a um, optical receiver uh, basically. So let's have a look at what happens inside the OMA or <coughs> the receiver side of the uh, optical transmission. 
So here we have the uh, block diagram for <coughs> uh, a uh, coherent receiver. So coherent receiver consists of a 90 degree hybrid mixer and the purpose of the coherent receiver is to mix the phase modulated signal with an unmodulated reference laser so that the variation in phase of the modulated signal can be tracked and recovered. Due to the intrinsic phase noise of the laser, the outputs of the coherent receiver needs to undergo many stages of digital signal processing, or DSP, before its phase modulated information can be extracted and displayed. So the hardware of IQ Scope RT is basically a coherent receiver, high performance optical coherent receiver. Uh, it's a gold standard uh, coherent receiver with high bandwidth up to 70 gigahertz. Today we are using an IQ scope with 42 gigahertz of bandwidth and its architecture ensures there's no low noise so that you get the most uh, SNR uh, from the, uh, uh, the measurement side. And it's calibrated for its uh, frequency response and skew characteristics so that what you're measuring from the OMA system is the properties of the signal uh, and it's not affected by uh, the uh, receiver itself. So the raw data from the coherent receiver for XI, XQ, YI, and YQ are now then connected to the oscilloscope, which is uh, uh, effectively an ADC uh, with a DSP running on it. Uh, the Labmaster oscilloscope does the ADC parts and the IQ Scope RT software which runs on the within the Labmaster interpolation and resampling. That's then passed on to a hardware calibration stage where the signals are calibrated for and its frequency response, IQ imbalance, and phase error. Then we go to the chromatic dispersion compensation stage where the signal is compensated for any frequency uh, chromatic dispersion that may be present in the signal using algorithms such as uh, frequency domain compensation uh, or finite impulse response uh, compensation. You can also use your custom uh, MATLAB uh, algorithm in there as well. Up until this point, the uh, visual representation of the constellations is uh, rather meaningless uh, because it's still, um, it still has the uh, frequency offset and other uh, in, uh, process that needs to be done to make it into a more meaningful uh, representation. So next, the polarization demultiplexing stage separates out the two polarizations so that you can now see some order in the constellation diagram. Previously, the information carried in both polarizations were all mixed and that, that contributed to the mush nature of the uh, constellation. Um, the, this stage also has the equalizer, uh, which uses FIR taps to bunch up the dots closer to the modula, uh, modula, modulus rings, which effectively opens up the eye and improves EVM. Common modulus algorithm, or CMA, assumes that the magnitude of all symbols are the same, so it is suitable for modulation formats such as uh, QPSK or BPSK. On the other hand, the multi-modulus algorithm or MMA can handle different magnitudes of symbols. It's, it's a cascade, um, cascaded CMA algorithm so that it can be used on higher order modulation formats such as 16-qual. Uh, Max ratio algorithm is uh, the choice for uh, single polarization signals. And uh, the constellation points you see here now form uh, rings as the difference in frequency 
at its peak frequency. So that's, uh, that's what's uh, making it into a ring. So by detecting the frequency offset and compensating for its rotation, now you get the constellation uh, more stable, it's not rotating, and the points are clustered around ideal symbol locations. The dots still look circularly smudged because of the phase noise still present in the signal. It's the phase noise from the laser. So the, here up top, uh, you see uh, configuration panels of the OMA software. If you click on the signal processing button, it opens up the algorithm selection, where you can choose from the drop-down menu, built-in algorithms or import your own custom algorithm. The <coughs> we'll not uh, worry too much about the dispersion compensation. It has two algorithms built in. But uh, today we're using back-to-back uh, -back, uh, uh, in the experiments, so uh, there's very little dispersion compensation required. For polarization, the MUX and equalizer. Uh, for QPSK modulation format, it's best to use CMA as it's more robust. And for carrier recovery, we'll use Viterbi and Viterbi for QPSK. Again, that's more uh, robust. Uh, algorithm. For 16 QAM, now we, uh, we should use MMA, multi-modulus algorithm uh, and decision-directed algorithm for carrier recovery. Now as a note, um, for 16 QAM, uh, we need to use smaller gradient for MMA algorithm uh, so that uh, when it converges it it does a more uh, fine tuning um, and uh, this prevents less uh, offshoot as it converges and uh, if you use a high the algorithm to fail um, as it offshoots and it doesn't converge uh, in, in time. You can also use a larger number of symbols, so um, you know it, it goes through more iterations, uh, converging to uh, the correct um, point. Okay, so here um, I'll be now jumping into uh, experimental modulator optimization. Now, optimizing a 16 qualm signal is uh, rather difficult. Um, now, because there are more labels to worry about, and uh, it's, it's much easier uh, if you are optimizing a QPSK signal. Now, in today's configuration, sample is generated, we can turn off the uh, low channels, A low and B low, which then basically uh, makes the high channels pass through the pample generator. It's uh, attenuated, of course, but what you get is uh, two binary channels which can combine to generate QPSK signal. So 
I'll call this QPSK mode and uh, uh, we'll turn it into this mode and um, optimize the modulator. So to optimize the modulator, firstly we perform bias point optimization, which is a uh, um, which, which basically uh, changes the bias points of I and Q as well as the optical phase between I and Q. Alright, so here's the exper experimental setup that uh, uh, I'll be uh, adjusting today. Now the PAM4 generator has been uh, disconnected from the scope and is now Now, is it ready yet? Uh, it's calibrating. Okay. So, let's just, everything's on. Okay, so let's switch to um, the scope. Uh, you should be seeing the uh, scope display now. Let's full screen it. Now the signal is still in uh, 16 qualm, so you know, as you can see, when it's not optimized, it's really hard to see what's happening, and it's you know, it, you're starting blind, so it's quite difficult to optimize. So let me go to the uh, Enrich PPG and turn off uh, the uh, A low and B low channels. So that will, in turn, make it into a QPSK uh, kind of shape. And then, now, of course, I need to uh, change the settings on the scope to QPSK so that it knows what it's looking at. And also, I need to uh, change the algorithms suitable for QPSK. Now, Okay, so now you're seeing something something that looks like a QPSK, but uh, the modulator is still very um, off bias. So let's start uh, adjusting the bias points to optimize it. First off, we start with the uh, IQ phase offset bias control uh, because uh, <coughs> that's uh, that's always a good point to start when the offset when the phase is offset. Uh, the constellation is not square, and what that means is the eye diagrams you see is also not um, not pretty. So I'm slowly changing the um, bias point. I'm turning the knob, so now you can see the constellation it's turning more and more square as I turn the knob to its optimal bias point. That's now about right. Let me see. It's a time consuming process because you have to be really gentle and sensitive when you turn the knob. Yes, and uh, while I'm tuning, I'm not only looking at the visual constellation, the shape of the constellation plot, but I'm also looking at the um, the numerical measurements. So in this, uh, you can see the mouse here. In this, uh, the numerical display box, there's a quadrature error, which is the angle uh, of the constellation between I and Q. So ideally, we want to optimize it down to less than one one degree. So let me continue on with the optimization. Okay, there we go. Now. Okay, that's uh, that's in milli degrees, so it's uh, 
consider good enough. Now, next step is to optimize the modulator bias for I channel. So, I'm turning the knob now <coughs> for the I bias. So, you'll be able to see the constellation. Uh, now, it's shifting in um, X axis to where it's supposed to be. And also, the I diagram for I is uh, opening up and it's symmetrizing. So, um, I'm getting there. It's, I'm also looking at the I bias error when I'm tuning this. So, it's approaching 1% again. I'd like to keep it under 1%. Oh, there we go. Now, with um, okay, that's good. And then moving on to the Q channel modulator bias optimization. Uh, let me. All right. Now this will adjust <coughs> the vertical alignment of the constellation plot. So you you see now it's being bumped up vertically to where it's supposed to be. Again looking at both uh, visual display of it and the numerical representation of the errors makes the uh, tuning process much, much easier. These bias points do tend to have um, interdependency, so uh, you, you'll see that uh, once I set the bias code points for I and Q, um, the quadrature or uh, phase offset needs readjustment. Okay. Now I am adjusting the um, phase offset to optimize the quadrature error. Okay, now it's more square. Oops. It's, it's very easy to overshoot if you move too much. Okay, I'm I'm struggling a little bit here. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, should be should be good enough. Okay, now <coughs> another thing that uh, we'll be optimizing here. Now we've set the bias points. Let me revert back to the slides. Okay. So, transmitter skew correction. Now, the connection from the pan generator to the IQ transmitter is uh, consists of uh, matched RF cables. But, um, you know, so, you know, cables cannot be exactly the same length, so there's always this uh, uh, path mismatch. And that contributes to the transmitter skew, uh, which means uh, difference in path between I and Q channels. Now that can be corrected for from the PPG side by injecting uh, an extra delay to the appropriate channels. So as you can see, if I inject the same delay to the B channels, B high and B low, um, that will um, com combined will inject the same delay to the PAM4B channel output, which will compensate for the skew. Now, 
let's move to the uh, scope display again to see how we can do that. Now here you are seeing the IQ skew, which is the offset of between the two eye diagrams, and also the the curved curved transition in between in this through the center indicates that there's some skew uh, in the signal. So I'm going to adjust uh, the delay of the B high in the PPG. Where's the mouse for B? Here we go. So that's um, B high. Okay. Yeah, 220. I've shifted the <coughs> delay control of the B high channel. So as you can see now, um, it's it's now aligned and IQ skew is less than one picosecond. You can see the eyes have lined up. Yes, 214 femtoseconds. Yeah, there you go. And now that I have moved one of the um, B channels, I have to do the same for the other B, B low, which is turned off at the moment but I will go to um, the low and add the same amount of uh, shift that I added to the uh, high. Okay, so now the skew adjustments have been performed and let's go back to the slide. The next step is to optimize for the level spacing. Uh, this involves uh, switching back to the Q16 QAM mode. So I'm going to uh, go back to the oscilloscope and switch on the low channels so that you see um, you see the uh, 16, uh, 16 QAM again. So I'm turning them on from the PPG now. And there we go. So what you're seeing here is the transition to a 16 quam. Now, <coughs> the RF voltage levels for QPSK mode and 16 quam mode are different because for 16 quam you added one volt to 0.5 volts. So the IQ modulator is now being input with higher voltage, and IQ modulator is very sensitive to temperature. So due to RF heating, the bias points will, uh, will differ a little bit, will shift a little bit uh, when the input voltage level is different. So now we've appro approximately optimized it, but in the 16 QAM mode we need to uh, repeat the process and uh, fine tune the bias points. So <clears throat> I'm going to set the scope appropriately to 16 QAM operation <coughs> as you can see and uh, I'm going to disable the transitions in the uh, constellation because for 16 QAM it just makes it look really messy. So when you look at the um, constellation and eye diagrams you notice that the center eye is larger than the top and bottom eyes. Now if we revert to my uh, PowerPoint slides. This is due to the modulator response curve of the IQ modulator. So it has a response that looks like a sinusoidal wave and this means that to get even optical spacing out from the optical modulator you need to inject it with driving signals that's unevenly spaced. Uh, in particular, the center levels, the levels two and one and two, is a zero, one, two, three. They need to be closer together so that the uh, optical output has an even spacing. So we can tune that. You're looking at the uh, oscilloscope display. 
Now, oh, this slide explains how, uh, how this is done. So, again, referring back to how the PAM4 is generated, it's a combination of uh, A high and low uh, channels, which we set to 1 volt and 0.5 volt. Now, to make the center smaller, center gap smaller, uh, we can either increase the uh, low channel voltage to 0.6 or something like that, or decrease the high channel voltage so that uh, either can work or we can even do both. But today um, I'm going to reduce the um, <coughs> voltage of the high channels to make it uh, even. So at the moment this is set to 1 volt, but now I'm going to make it uh, 0 0.9 volt. So I'm changing the voltage level in the PPG. Uh, so again changing it for the other channel to 0 0.9 volt. <coughs> so on the scope display now you can see the change has made it uh, more evenly distributed. Okay, so you see e evenly spaced constellation and eye diagrams. And uh, let's have a look at uh, uh, what we can do now. Now, it's got 10% EVM, which is, which is uh, you know, adequate. And we can turn on more parameters like ER estimate. IQ offset, frequency offset, and also we can have a look at uh, other visualizations. So at the moment we are using uh, MMA algorithm. Um, so this one we have set to a large number of symbols with uh, slightly lower gradient so that it converges better. And we are using decision-directed uh, carrier recovery algorithm. For dispersion frequency, uh, uh, chromatic dispersion compensation, uh, with, uh, not set, not, we're not compensating anything due to we are back-to-back uh, -to -back today. So it sets zero meters. Okay, so visualize, coming back to visualizations, we can turn on various other graphs such as intensity eye diagram. Uh, people are used to seeing uh, direct measurement of uh, optical signals. So this is, this is what you'll see on, a, for example, a sampling scope. It's a three-level eye diagram indicating that uh, for intensity there are uh, three levels of uh, uh, radius. So one center, the next one there, and then the outer one. Uh, you can also see the phase eye diagram, which um, which shows you the say the twelve different phase levels, sixteen sorry, I mean sixteen different phase levels um, yeah, for sixteen quam. Hang on, it is twelve, isn't it? Because uh, the two overlap. Sorry. Okay. Now. So if you look at one quadrant, you see four symbols, but two, two of these uh, diagonal symbols are overlapped. So that's why this phase level is thicker, um, and you see the two other phase levels uh, next to it. And you have four of these for the four quadrants. You can also display um, spectrum if you're interested in seeing how much bandwidth it's occupying, how much uh, bandwidth you can reduce it to, uh, and you can utilize all the useful visualization functions of uh, LabMaster Oscilloscope, such as uh, color, 3D, graph view, where you can freely adjust the angle to put it where you want to see it. Okay, now I'm going to revert back to the normal view. 
and turn off one of these uh, graphs. Okay, so that, that's been a quick um, experimental demonstration of transmitter optimization for 16 quam optical signals. Um, all right, let's go back to the slides. In summary, we hosted uh, a, another webinar back in July uh, with LightWave on generation, acquisition, and analysis of PAM4 and 16 QAM signals. If you haven't seen that webinar yet, uh, please go to this link below. Uh, and as, as it gives you a more um, top-level overview of the entire process, you'll find it useful. So today, we have experimentally demonstrated uh, 16 QAM generation using uh, voltage combined PAM4 signals. And we also optimize the PAM4 signals using <coughs> LabMaster oscilloscopes, serial data analysis. Um, and uh, we generated PAM4 using Enritsu's PPG. Thank you, Enritsu, for uh, making this possible. And we optimized 16 QAM optical signals using uh, Coherent Solutions IQScope RT optical modulation analyzer. So, if you want to know more about the optical signal generation and characterization, you can ask us for a product demonstration. We have product demo units around the world and we frequently host uh, demo visits, demo trips. And email us for the latest IQScope RT, IQ transmitter, and LabMaster data sheets, and uh, any other marketing material that we have available. The optical link, the OMA software that you saw today, is now available as a standalone product. So please inquire us if you already have a LabMaster. to register for uh, the seminar. And lastly, um, later in September, we'll be exhibiting at ECOC at booth 212 in Cannes, France. So if you're visiting ECOC, please drop by and say hi, and we'll have the live demo there. Um, and so we'll be able to um, discuss about the system further. OK, so now uh, back to you, Hillary. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I just sent out a note uh, that we will be sending an email um, as a follow-up to this event that will include a copy of the slide deck uh, used today, a uh, link to the recorded presentation, and I will also include a link to the July webinar that uh, Sung Hoon had just referred to. Um, if you have any questions uh, for either presenter, uh, Alan or Sung Hoon, please go ahead and send them in now. Um, there was a question uh, that was sent. By the um, the symbol locations, that, um, we, we calculated from the symbol position, the center of the eye. Um, I'm not quite sure um, what the the exact question is asking for. So if the person could uh, leave me an email, I'll, um, I'll get back to them with the, uh, the correct answer. OK. Um, Antonio, I will uh, send you uh, Dr. In's, In's um, information right now. Um, another question just came in from Pavel, wants to know how often the constellation diagram is updated. All right, this, the refresh rate of um, the constellation is dependent on the DSP settings, for example, how many symbols you're capturing and um, what the DSP parameters you've set to. So if you, if, you, if you run light, if you use less number of symbols, it can update pretty quickly, um, say half a second. Uh, but you know, today I've been using 3,000 symbols and uh, a long DSP uh, symbol length um, for a more accurate measurement. 
so that um, that made it refresh at uh, say one and a half second or something like that. Okay, so Pavel, hopefully that answered your question. If not, feel free to um, send another comment, and I can either take you off mute or you can reach out uh, through the questions section. Okay, um, Antonia is going to send you an email um, to ask about the bias uh, error detection. Um, several people are still asking for the presentation slides. Again, I will send them out in an email to everyone. Um, everyone has registered with an email address, so as long as that works, uh, you shall receive them later today. Um, thank you for all the kind comments about um, how much you enjoyed the webinar and thought it was informative. Um, we do thank you, and um, unless anyone else has anything, I think that's it. And uh, we'll be sure to keep you in the loop for any future webinars that we uh, put on. So thank you for your time, uh, Alan Sunghoon. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you. <laughs>